right? So, um, again, all your Blackboard stuff needs to be up to date. All of your, uh, what is it? Uh, domain name, password, email, all that stuff needs to be working because you're going to get a lot of emails, a lot of announcements, a lot of links and things like that. So you need to definitely have your university email working. If it's not working, you need to get it working like ASAP. Okay, I got you. That's no problem. You're not late. You're good. Um, we scroll, keep scrolling here. All the course requirements are here. Instructor information is here. Academic calendar is here. I got to edit this a current academic calendar up, but all that information will be updated um, by tomorrow. Uh, if you have questions about the course, there's a QA uh, link. If you click here, it'll take you to that link. Uh, there's a discussion board. I'm gonna have, and I'll talk about this when I go into the module. But every week there's a discussion board and a discussion question. And you have to do that like every week. That's part of your grade. But I'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, prerequisite knowledge is already there. We need to have passed 230 Chem 231 in the lab and part two in the lab with C. Uh, the textbook, you can use the second edition, that's fine, but all the questions that are in the module are from the third edition. So I don't care what um, platform you use. You can use the ebook, you can use the PDF. Uh, we don't do the uh, Wally Plus. You don't have to have that. Uh, all the homework assignments are already written. So you don't have to do all that stuff with Wally Plus. And all. Definitely, uh, especially with the fact that there's not a lot of time. You gotta have a book. You gotta have uh, some study time of your own to go to and to read the sections that are. You know, Oh, my laptop closer. What about now? Is that is that better? A little better. Mm, let me get my headphones. Give me a second. All right. What about now? Okay. All right, cool. So, yeah, you got to have a book because uh, you're going to have to have some way to have, you know, a source for all your information. All right. Because the videos are one thing, but backing that up and reinforcing it with the book is something totally different. All right. So the whole technology requirements, if you're able to get on Blackboard throughout the semester, you're not going to have any problems. Uh, getting on Blackboard now. As far as the exams are concerned, um, we'll go. We'll discuss that. Uh, I got. I want to talk to Dr. Collier about that because we may be using Proctor U, and Proctor U now is free. I think for us, so you won't have to pay out of pocket. Uh, that I know of. And if that's the case, you're definitely gonna have to have a, a laptop with a webcam on it. So if that, if you got an issue with that, we need to fix that, like or get that squared away up front so that it doesn't become a problem later on when it's time to take that first exam. Um, let's see. Yeah, so if you have a complaint, I mean, you can lodge a complaint uh, with the instructors or you can lodge it with uh, the Office of Distance Education with Mr. Glaze or Ms. MacArthur. Uh, and then if you have anything dealing with a grade appeals, then the way that you appeal a grade is in the student handbook. Uh, if you have any issues dealing with registration, you can appeal, you can uh, discuss that with the registrar. And then withdrawals, you can also uh, discuss that with the registrar. And then tuition refunds and all that stuff. Uh, we, if we use Proctor U, you're gonna be asked to authenticate your identity. So just be prepared for that. And then all the other netiquette expectations, we, we really don't have to go over that. Uh, it's no different than being, well, 
Let me not say that. We just, you expected to be uh, respectful and polite, but the only time you're going to interact with each other on a digital level it will be in the discussion board. So that's going to be expected to be respectful and polite and <clears throat> no profanity and things like that. Um, let me go back up to here. So the syllabus is here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to have to update that. So right now, all the all the information in the syllabus is fine. I just need to change a couple of dates in there. Yeah, that may change. Uh, I'm not certain about that yet. I'm gonna talk to Dr. Carl here so we can uh, iron that out. So yeah, the syllabus says three proctored exams and proctor you, and then one, uh, three open note exams. So we're going to talk, discuss that, and if that changes, it'll be the syllabus will be updated, and you'll get notification that that the syllabus has been updated. Uh, yeah, so all the all the other information in the syllabus doesn't change, right? The uh, contact information is all the same. The re response time is the same, um, and then we'll have virtual office hours between uh, twelve and three. Uh, not going to go over the mission statement, but the prerequisites and all that stuff is there. Uh, this picture is old before this is when I had hair and stuff. Uh, the co it says core requisite chem 322, but the lab is not offered uh, on online. We can't offer the lab online. So you'll have to take the lab on ground and you can register for it in the fall or you can register for it whenever we open the university back up. Um, there are some optional materials here. I, I would highly suggest that you uh, bookmark this website, Master Organic Chemistry. It is it's it's basically a, a like a book, but it's a, it's written in blog form, and the author is a, a Harvard graduate who couldn't. I think he was he went to Harvard, but he wanted to teach at MIT and he couldn't get in. They wouldn't let him in, so he started his own blog so he could teach. Uh, chemistry the way that he wanted to. It's a very good website and very thorough uh, with a lot of free resources too. So my suggestion would be to bookmark that somewhere uh, and make sure that you can you refer back to and use that as a resource. Uh, the organic reaction flashcards app, <clears throat> I'm going to suggest, suggest that especially for the later weeks, uh, like week five and week six, because that's all reactions and you're gonna need <clears throat> those flashcards to help you study. And I promise you they'll, they'll benefit you. Uh, if you download the app and then you make, a, uh, make your own flashcards at the same time, it'll definitely be beneficial. There's some optional reading materials that I, I mean, you don't have to have these, but they're interesting books, Napoleon's Buttons. Very interesting book, uh, it, it's basically Practical applications of organic chemistry, all dating all the way back to uh, like the French Revolution, the Revolutionary War, medieval times, so on and so forth. Uh, and then understanding organic reaction mechanisms. <clears throat> I would, if you are interested in doing STEM past the undergrad level, that's a book that I would definitely uh, add to my repertoire, as well as Electron Flow and Organic Chemistry by Paul Scudder, which is an excellent, excellent book. It, it touches on every topic that you need to know, uh, but it does it in a way that's kind of different than a, a regular textbook. <clears throat> it's about a third of the length of a regular textbook too. And there's only been two editions published. So it's a, it's a great book. We already talked about the technology requirements. Uh, let's go down to, we already talked about the book, uh, the instructional methods. Let's talk about that. So again, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been out here uh, in this grass all day, so excuse me. Um, with this being a fully online class, right, that the instructional method is not what, what you probably expect if you've never taken an online class, right? There are very few face-to-face uh, -face lectures. We will have study sessions, but that's not going to be like a, a, a daily meeting or anything like that. Uh, so we'll have our discussions and then mostly video lectures. Right, so YouTube videos dealing with every topic that you're going to be studying, and then after you do that, if you look, we, I'll show you the modules in a second. But when you look in the modules, you're going to see um, 
in the, in each module, there's a read a section that tells you what to read from the book uh, to go along with the assignments that are going to be due. Uh, and then that's what the, that's what these core competencies are, right? So every every chapter, if you want to know what's going to be on the exam, look at the syllabus, look at the, the uh, bold topics, and those are going to be the topics that are on the exam. It's that simple, right? So this is your study guide for every exam. So the first uh, first chapter is dealing with isomers and drawing structures and formal charges, chemical bonding theory, <laughs> theory excuse me, hybridization. Uh, polar covalent bonds and molecular forces, so on and so forth. The problems that are highlighted are problems that are for the third edition book. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's the third edition. So those are the problems that you can look at in addition to the assignments that you have to turn in. These problems that are highlighted, you don't have to turn those in. Those are not like requirements. Those are additional exercises like to help you to reinforce what you're studying. And every chapter is laid out the same way with objectives, and then section numbers that you should read for each section and then problems, right? And so the whole, the rest of the syllabus is basically all of your objectives laid out for each section. And then this, this is going to change. Damn, Both. It's not going to be uh, like more like either one. It's going to, the, the exam is going to look like both. Sometimes some of the questions on the exam, you know, will be look will look like questions from those study problems, and then sometimes it'll look like from the assignment. So it's going to be a mixture of both. That's a good that's a good question. But uh -huh. um, so the exam dates. Let me see if that's going to change since today's the first. The seventh is on a Sunday. Yeah, so that's uh, the, the exam dates are going to change when I update the syllabus. So be looking out for that. So the, the exam, it says Friday, June 7th. The first exam is going to be open. It's not going to be proctored. So it says June 7th. It's really going to be June 5th. But normally what I do is open the exams on Friday and leave them open. If it's an open note exam, it'll stay open until Sunday at midnight or Sunday at 1159. That's the cutoff date for everything. Right, so all your assignments, every exam, all the quizzes, all that stuff, everything is due at the end of the week on Sunday by 11.59, right? If it's late, then it'll be, some points will be deducted for it being late. By, by late, I mean turned in on Monday or turned in on Tuesday <laughs> or whatever. <clears throat> but the exam is gonna open on the 5th. Now, if it's a proctored exam, then that, that particular exam is going to be due when you take it. It'll still be open on the site over the weekend, but you'll have to schedule a time between Friday and Sunday at 11:59 to take it with uh with Proctor U. Um, the final is 135 points. Then you're going to have YouTube quizzes uh, that are in each module that you'll have to take. Pre and post assessments in each module that you'll have to take. Your assignments are in each module that you'll have to have to uh, complete and turn in. My suggestion is to download uh, Cam Scanner, which is an app, uh, app that you can put on your phone. And you can take a picture of your assignment and turn it into a PDF. PDFs are easier for me to open and grade. So uh, go ahead and download that app at some point before Sunday so you can uh, convert all your images into PDFs and then just upload them to Blackboard. And I'll show you where to upload everything and all of that. So the online Q&A period is probably going to change uh, based on Dr. Carl, your schedule, because he's the one that, that's going to normally conduct that. Uh, and so I'll go in, I'll talk to him and see what times he's going to set that up, and then we'll just go from there. Uh, and then the assignments and returning assignments, your assignments will be uh, probably returned to you by the middle of the, the following week. Uh, do you still have a schedule? Let me see. No, I think Proctor U has, uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, I think Proctor U changed their, um, they changed their scheduling uh, format up. So I don't think you have to do three days ahead of time. I'm not, I'll check on that and I'll let you know. Uh, but right now, I think we have free access to Proctor U. We bought some licenses uh, and I know the, <laughs> the uh, DL classes are all going to be uh, able to access that. So I don't think you have to do three days ahead of time. Um, let me see. So the instructor feedback, 
that'll be different ways. Sometimes I'll reply to the discussion board. We can have video chats, uh, conversations about questions that you might have, written feedback on your assignments when you turn something in. You know, you'll, there'll be a little rubric, and then you'll be able to see, like, why you got points taken off, why you missed a certain thing or something like that. Um, so the grading scale is here. 90 to 100 is A. 78 to 89 is a B. And then 69 to 77 is a C, so on and so forth. Uh, and then this is the lecture schedule, right? We're going to cover chapter 1, 2, 3, <clears throat> chapter 6 and 11 deals with polar and re, uh, radical reactions. So it's, it's going to be real important to go back up to those objectives and look at what's going to be covered from each of those chapters because it's not going to be both chapters. It's going to be pieces of each chapter. And then 7 and 8, which is substitution and elimination. Uh, chapter 9 is alkenes. Chapter 10 is alkynes. And then 